Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup with all the best bits from the weekend's football in the Cinch Championship League 1 and League 2. On this week's episode, Dundee United hit the high fives at Fur Hill. Falkirk tighten their grip on pole position with yet another late winner. And Taylor Sutherland steals the show on his first start for Bonnie Rig Rose. Across Scottish football, clubs throughout the country showed their commitment to tackling racism by supporting Show Racism the Red Cards Match Actions campaign. Through education and the power of football, the SPFL and our teams are committed to eradicating racism from football and society. The weekend's football kicked off in Lanarkshire on Friday evening. Queen's Park made a bright start, with Louis Longridge testing Josh Ray early on. Airdrie are a team with a wealth of attacking talent. Star striker Callum Gallagher curling this one just over the top of the Queen's net. Queen's Park are a side who like to play out from the back where possible, though their bravery in possession was punished in the 39th minute. Will Tizard dispossessed in the middle of the park, allowing Gallagher to be sent in behind and tuck away the opening goal. A ruthless counter-attack and a smart finish from Gallagher. Airdrie pushed to double their lead in double quick time. Queen's keeper Callum Ferry being kept on his toes by both Liam McStravick and Gallagher. Into the second half and Queen's came flying out the traps. An effective high press in the 46th minute providing Jack Turner with a chance to level the scores which he took with aplomb. The former Southampton youth grabbing his third Queen's Park goal. Ruri Payton has been in good scoring form this season. He was denied a cracking goal by a top save from Ray. Both keepers made some important saves on the night. Ferry getting down low to keep out this one from McStravick. Late into the game, Queen's Park would be reduced to 10 men. Barry Hepburn given his marching orders after the referee spotted an off-the-ball incident and added time. And Airdrie would have one last chance to win the game. Substitute Nikolai Todorov being laid off on the edge of the box, but his shot was just too central. The spoils shared on a wet and windy evening in Lanarkshire. Partick Thistle welcomed Dundee United to Fur Hill for the first league meeting between the sides since 2020. Glenn Middleton denied an early opener by Jamie Snedden. Though the scoring would be open from the resulting corner, an in-swinging cross finding Craig Sibbald in space, who lashed it home in the 12th minute. Sibbald grabbing his first league goal since the opening day. Thistle had chances of their own in the first half. Stephen Lawless working an angle, but his shot too central to really test Jack Walton. United went close to doubling their lead through Kai Fotheringham, the midfielder shot going narrowly wide of Snedden's post. And Thistle pushed for a leveller just before the interval, Harry Milne creating a yard of space but just missing the mark. Kevin Holt made the switch from Fur Hill to Tannadice in the summer. He came back to haunt his former club just beyond the hour mark with a thunderous strike into the top corner. A surefire goal of the month contender from the defender.
With two goals in the bag, United pressed hard to increase their advantage. Good work from Fotheringham in the 63rd minute, allowing Louis Moult to nod one down for Scott McMahon, who provided the finish. A second goal of the season for the United fullback. United's attacking play was relentless in the second period. Former Jag Ross Doherty crushing one off the woodwork here. The away side's search for a fourth would come to fruition on 83 minutes. A corner kick into a dangerous area with Holt getting the vital touch. The defender showing his credentials as an attacking outlet. and things would go from bad to worse for the hosts in the 88th minute. Referee Stephen Kirkland spotting a foul on Tony Watt in the area and pointing to the spot. With a brace already in his pocket, Holt stepped up to the mark and tucked the penalty away to complete the unlikeliest of hat-tricks at Fur Hill. Holt stealing the show, and United heading back to Dundee with all three points. Two sides jostling for position faced off at East End Park on Saturday. Dunfermline had a huge chance to take the lead early on, but Josh Edwards fired it over the top. Logan Chalmers continues to impress week after week in this Air United side. He put the honest men a goal up in the 10th minute after great work from Anton Dowds. The winger with his fourth league goal of the campaign. Having set up the first, Dowds almost scored Air's second, but Dennis Mehmet got down to deny the striker. Ayr kept things in high gear in the first half. Chalmers again causing problems, his shot from a tight angle going narrowly wide. But the best chance of the half would come to Mark McKenzie. He rounded Mehmet and had the goal at his mercy, but his patience allowed Aaron Conroy to recover with a terrific block. And McKenzie would have another chance before the break, the forward this time sliding one past the post in a 1v1. Big chances had been few and far between for the hosts. That was until Ewan Otto popped up at a corner kick and headed just over the top. But Dunfermline's biggest opportunity was still to come. On loan Celtic midfielder Ben Summers crashing one off the post from range, with Alex Jakubiak following up only to be denied what seemed like a certain goal by a big save from Charlie Albinson. Summer signing Francis Amarty hadn't scored since mid-August. He weaved his way into the area late on, but couldn't beat Mehmet at his near post. A game of plenty chances, but it was Chalmers' early goal which decided it. Here's how the Sins Championship table is shaping up after the weekend's football. Dundee United cemented their place at the top with a huge win at Fur Hill. A home point against Queen's Park moves Airdrie up to 4th place, while Air United leapfrogged Dunfermline into 6th place after their win at East End. Falkirk made the short trip along the M9 to Fourth Bank with aspirations of tightening their grip on pole position in Cinch League One. Ross McKeever got them off and running just five minutes in. McKeever's curling effort catching Blair Curry off guard. McKeever could have had a second soon after but was denied by a brilliant challenge from Jordan McGregor. Falkirk's search for a second went on, 
Alfredo Aguiman's effort from a corner bouncing back off the post before being cleared. The away side's next big chance would fall for Gary Oliver. Sterling stopper Curry doing well to close the angle. Sterling's first real sight of goal came when Josh Cooper slipped in Aaron Dunsmore, but the number seven's effort went high and wide. McKeever could have doubled his tally for the afternoon here, but Curry was able to deny the striker this time round. Missed chances would come back to bite Falkirk just a minute before half time. The Bairns defence having a couple of opportunities to clear their lines, with Dunsmore there to pick up the pieces and level the scores. A first league goal of the campaign for Dunsmore. Into the second period and Falkirk had a huge chance to restore their lead. Calvin Miller setting up Cal Morrison, who pulled his shot wide. And on the hour mark, it looked as though Sterling may nudge themselves in front. Greg Spence playing in Lewis Milne, whose goal-bound effort was cleared off the line by Leon McCann. It looked as though the crucial goal just wasn't going to come for either side. Miller heading over from Morrison's cross here. But in the 83rd minute, Falkirk found a way through. Great work from McKeever, with Ethan Ross taking over and laying one off for Brad Spencer, who did the rest. Brilliant scenes behind the goal, with Falkirk leaving their best to last once again. Unbeaten Ackies welcomed winless Edinburgh City to Lanarkshire. Kevin O'Hara with the game's first big chance, which was well scrambled away by the City defence. Ackies kept on top in the opening exchanges. Regan Tumulty getting two bites of the cherry here, but neither finding the net. City would create chances of their own in the first period. On loan Motherwell man Robbie Mann going mightily close with a curling shot. The next key chance fell away of the hosts. A dangerous cross from the left finding Tumulty who skewed it agonisingly wide. But Ackies would find a way through before the break. Kyle McDonald striding into the area on 35 minutes and finishing low beneath Aidan McAdams for 1-0. McDonald's only other league goal to this point came in the reverse fixture at Meadow Bank in August. Aki's pushed to double their advantage before half time. Jamie Barjonas' effort dipping just wide of the post. The second half saw City come out and play with confidence. They created a huge chance on 52 minutes, with Ryan Shanley tucking away his second goal of the league campaign to level the scores. A big goal and a huge boost for new City boss Michael McIndoe in his first game in charge. And the away side could have taken the lead. The ball being cut back to Shanley, but he couldn't direct his effort goalwards. Aki's pushed hard to restore their lead late into the game. McDonald curling this one just wide of McAdams' goal. A point apiece in Hamilton. Kelty travelled to the Rex on a run of two straight league wins. They started on the front foot on Saturday and took the lead on 16 minutes through Reese Lyon. Tenacious play from Jamie Walker, allowing Lyon to crash one in off the bar for 1 0.
Alloa's first real sight of goal came when Taylor Stephen latched onto a nice cutback, but the forward shot was well held by Kyle Gurley. But the Wasps' next sight of goal would prove to be more fruitful. Brad Rodden turning smartly in the box in the 19th minute and picking out the bottom corner. Rodden scoring in the league for the first time since his opening day double at Palmerston. The second half saw Aloha continue to attack with purpose. An incredible Gourley save, keeping out Stephen's strike, which looked destined for the top corner. But from one end to the other, Kilty created a big chance soon after. Craig Johnston calling Philip Agai into action, with Lewis Moore firing wide on the follow-up. Aloha soon regained control of the match and were handed a big chance in the 68th minute when Bobby Wales was filled in the box with referee Graham Granger awarding a penalty kick. Aloha's Mr Reliable Scott Taggart was tasked with taking the kick and slotted it straight down the middle. The defender has scored each of his last five penalty kicks for Aloha. Having won the foul for the penalty, Wheels fancied a goal himself. His low effort well parried by Gourley. But the Wasps kept on pushing for more and finally grabbed their third on 81 minutes. Gourley parrying a cutback into the path of Stephen, who lashed home his first goal for the club. Brian Rice's side sealing their first win since early September. Both points and pride were on the line when Annan welcomed Queen's to Gala Bank. The away side had a few early half chances, but the first clear sight of goal came when Tommy Goss sent this one over the top from inside the area. Goss is always a huge threat in the box. This effort from an Aidan Smith cross, a whisker away from picking out the top corner. Queen's chances had been few and far between. That was up until Josh Todd strode through and forced a great save from Greg Fleming, with Annan eventually clearing the danger. On a day where local pride was at stake, how fitting it was that Dumfries local and Queen's hero Gavin Riley put his side a goal up on 43 minutes. A brilliant header from a pinpoint cross. And Riley could have had a second early in the second half. The forward unable to find the net with his left foot. Goss continued to be Annan's main attacking outlet. The forward will be disappointed that he couldn't find the net with this one. And in the dying embers, Annan had one last big chance. Michael Garrity working a yard of space and curling one, only to be denied by a fabulous save from Gordon Botterill. Queen's heading back along the A75 with the points in the bag. Now for a look at the Cinch League One table after another action-packed weekend. Falkirk go two points clear at the top, thanks to their win and Aki's drawing with Edinburgh City. Queen of the South's away win has them up in sixth and just two points away from the playoff places. And Alloa's big home win sees them leapfrog Cove Rangers into seventh. Spartans hosted Dumbarton in Ainsley Park on Saturday afternoon. David Wilson had a chance to give Suns the lead, but could only help it over the bar. Spartans had a few half chances in the first period, but this Danny Denham effort in the second half was arguably their best crack at goal to that point. The host though really came to life in the second period, Cammy Russell weaving his way through and placing one just wide. 
Sometimes the direct route is the best option, as Spartans discovered on 64 minutes. A lovely flick on from a goal kick, playing Russell through, who popped in the game's opening goal. Russell with his second goal in his last three league outings. And the winger went close to making it 3-3, three three, this free kick rattling the Dumbarton crossbar. Dumbarton had a big chance to level things late on. Carlo Pignicello's shot brilliantly kept out by Jack Herity. But it would be Spartans who had hit the net late in the game. The hosts going from one end to the other in emphatic fashion, with Bradley White supplying the finish on 86 minutes. Two goals, three points and a clean sheet to boot. Spartans are loving life in Cinch League 2. It's long from Martin. Dunicky does get in the way, but Rose continuing to come forward. Sutherland out to Miguel. Mailer for Miguel. He tries to take him on and he breezes past the Clyde fullback and it's in. Bonnerig Rose in front and it's a first Bonnerig Rose goal on his first Bonnerig Rose start for Taylor Sutherland. And it was put on a plate for the Dunfermline loan after. Some fantastic footwork from Roy Miguel. It's one in there by Stevenson. Uh, calls for a high foot there and Clyde will look to break. Here's White. Stevenson to his left. It's just about in front of him. Stevenson with the cut back though. And that one's put in by Rennie. And Clyde are level. It was helped along by Connor Young. And Rennie had ghosted in at the back post. And is he going to continue on with the ball? He gets past Curry and past Naylor. And he continues on past Kerr Young. And it's off the post, the header from Martin Rennie. Here's Gray. And for Buchanan. Looking for Sutherland. Can he get it on the spin? Deflected. And still saved by Leefield. Play it in the box. Rainey gets a nick on it. It's hit the post again. And it's Dunicky to put it home, perhaps. It's Stevenson. And Clyde are ahead. A late dagger in the first half from the Billy Wee. Martin Uke a nice pass in for Gray. Across for Buchanan. And he opens his goal scoring account for Bonnery Gross as well today. It was a well worked move, a great pass from Neil Martin Uke. Looking for Sutherland, can he get onto that one? Sutherland goes round the keeper. And Sutherland gets his second of the game. And gets the goal that puts Bonnery Gross in front. And what a way to introduce yourself to the Bonnery Gross faithful. Here's Cameron. King driving forward on that left hand side. Can he get past Miguel? And for Malcolm, who got a touch on that one, that's straight at Paddy Martin. And could that be the last chance for Clyde to try and take a point from this one? Switch ball for McManus, looking for Healy. Decent first touch. Can he make something of this? Goes for it on the left foot, and that's fairly comfortable for Rudinokis. Lays it off for Healy, takes the touch, cracking ball in, and it's another in at the back post! Oh, what a well worked goal that was! Comes off the head of Sneddon, Fash giving chase. Miller got his boot on it, Healy manages to bring it down. Gets the ball across on his left foot, oh, and it's at the post! Shepard. He's making the run ahead of him while he tries to play it inside. Oh, he might get there. He has done. He cuts it back. Yes. And Austin's made it 2 0. Well, it's the sheer perseverance there of Doherty because it didn't look like he was going to get to the through ball. 
Turned Matthew Grant. Brilliant, Newts. Spread it wide, flicked over for Shepard. Oh, this is some great play! And it's oh. number three! What a superb move! Just to get it into the penalty area. Drilled into the corner. Since the third goal... Um, oh, wait a minute. Flash! I to say that because Nicol has played it on to Austin. Oh, he's in! Oh, that's a good save from Budenokis. That would have made it absolutely sure. It's five seeing out what really has been a pretty comfortable victory now can they add to it cut back and oh it's off the line yeah. and the second asking. they have got the fourth goal let's check in on how things stand in Cinch League 2 Spartans' home win over Dumbarton moves them up to third and level on points with the Suns. Bonnie Reg Rose are knocking on the door of the top four after an excellent home win. And an emphatic win over Stranraer allows East Fife to start looking upwards as they jump up to seventh. <laughs>